Hey guys and welcome to yet another Monkey Pixels tutorial. My name is Damien Cooper and today we're talking about shooting handheld and how you can get stable shots out of your camera with a couple of tricks. One, two, three, listen. When going online you see so many people complaining about the camera not having in-body stabilization or a lens being completely useless for video because it doesn't feature image stabilization and quite honestly I don't get it because I never really had a camera that had in-body stabilization and I rarely use any lenses with stabilization and I never really had a problem with it. The majority of the videos that I shoot are handheld and I really like the look and the flexibility of it and I never really had a problem getting stable footage out of it. As a matter of fact, a while ago I actually filmed a walk and talk in Los Angeles, having to walk backwards with the camera in my hand for about 23 minutes. And that was a complete one shot and I had to walk through traffic and cross some streets, also adjusting for the exposure on my camera and I didn't have in-body stabilization or a stabilized lens or even a shoulder rig or a gimbal. Like I already said, the majority of our videos are shot handheld for more flexibility and when looking at our Model Shoot Monday playlist, I think all of them are shooting exclusively handheld with focal length up to 70 millimeters. And again, I never really had a lot of problems of getting the footage stable. So let's start with the thing that I think is the most important when it comes to getting stable footage. And that is an advice that you won't be able to change overnight, but you can start working on it right now. So in my opinion, the thing that most filmmakers actually lack the most when it comes to shooting handheld is physical strength. Having the ability to absorb shocks and movement of your camera with your arm, core and back muscles is a huge benefit to have. So not only will you get better handheld footage out of this, but it's also way better for your overall health in the long run. And that doesn't even go for handheld shooting alone, but also for shooting with gimbals when the setup is even heavier. So I can definitely recommend implementing some kind of workout routine into your life. But let's talk about some things you can actually change right now to get better footage. And here's tip number two, and that is rigging out your camera. Add a little bit of weight and more options to grip your camera can go a long way when it comes to shooting handheld. But just to give you a simple idea, I like to add a top handle, a cage, a microphone, and I usually have a monitor on top as well, but I'm using mine to record this video right now. And in that case, I have a really big and heavy lens on the front. And the way I like to grip my camera is usually that I have my left hand on the bottom of the lens to give it a nice feel. and I can can also manually focus if need be and my right hand is usually on the side handle or on the top handle when doing low angle shots and that alone gives you a way better stability than just holding your camera like this and maybe even having a really small lens in front of it so this is definitely a valuable tip to get better footage out of your camera and this brings me to tip number two and that is the way you actually hold your camera so a really big important lesson to learn is don't extend your arms out. Keep everything tight. The way I usually do it is what's called T-Rex hands is that you just get your hands as close to your body as possible and just hold the camera right in front of you. Don't try to extend your arms and try filming it like this because this introduces a lot of shaking into your video and it's way harder to get stable footage out of it. And when I'm talking about keeping everything tight, I'm not only talking about the position of the camera, but also try to actively engage your core, your back and your arm muscles. And that goes a long way for getting stable footage. And the next tip I have for you is micro movement. And that means limiting your range of motion a little. And try not to extend your arms and just walk around uncontrollably, but try to move with your upper body instead of your entire body. What I mean by that, for example, if you wanna pan the camera from left to right, just use your torso and your upper body. Instead of just rocking around from left to right, you just move your torso and pan it that way. And the same goes for your lower body movement. Instead of walking around and back and forth the entire time, try to do most of the movement with your hips and your legs, instead of just using some steps to gain a little bit of traction. 
But when you do have to gain some distance, then try implementing the ninja walk. And that is usually used when shooting on gimbals, but it's obviously also a great way to absorb shaking when shooting handheld. And what I mean by that is that you're basically going a little lower and try to roll your walks from your heels to the front of your toes, instead of just rocking on your toes. And that way you can actually absorb a little bit of the shaking. And here's a misconception about shooting handheld. A lot of people recommend having a three point of contact when shooting, but that goes more for shooting stills than it actually does for shooting video. Because what I found is the three points of contact you usually have is from your right hand, your left hand, and then try to close it to your chest. But when you walk and move around a lot, your chest actually introduces more shake and jitter into your camera that it actually helps stabilizing. And that only goes for when you're moving. When you're completely standing still, then yes, the three point of contact rule is actually pretty good because now you can press it to your chest and get a little bit more stability that way. But remember, that only works when standing still. When walking, I feel like having it a couple inches away from your chest works best to not introduce more unnecessary shape. And here's the last tip that I've been doing for years now and that is actually a pretty neat way to get really stable footage out of a somewhat small to medium sized camera. And that is utilizing a camera strap. And the way this works is that you're trying to create tension between your camera and your camera straps. So you have it around your neck and you're pushing forward so that you don't have a lot of wriggle room when it comes to movements of the camera. And this way you can actually get pretty decent tilts and even pans. And even when just walking around and forward, backwards, whatever you wanna do, just try to keep the tension high on your camera strap when shooting. And this way you get a lot more stable footage out of your camera than when you would just extend your arms out like this. So obviously now you have to extend your arms out to get this tension onto your strap, but try not to have it too far away from your body and try to shorten your strap a little so that you're still tight and close, but still get this tension on your strap. So there you have it. These are my tips to get the best looking footage out of your DSLRs, mirrorless, and even mid-sized cinema cameras. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and maybe follow us on Instagram as well for more behind the scenes content and consider subscribing if you wanna see more tips as well as how I rig out our cameras to get more stable footage in the future. And then I hope to see you on the next one.